Hi, and welcome to Gabriel Speaks. I'm Lynn Gabriel, doing this episode by my lonesome because Father is just not around for today. Uh, we're going to be talking about Christmas. Well, everybody's talking about Christmas these days in, in, in different terms and for different reasons. Um, I'm thinking, first of all, about some of the Christmases I grew up with. They were wonderful. And they always, my parents always managed to keep the Christ in Christmas. I grew up in Canton, Ohio, where, and was fortunate enough to be part of a church community where we had four seminarians. And those seminarians would take turns with the teenage church group that I belonged to, introducing us to things to, to the Orthodox Church. Um, because as very young children, we went and colored. There was no, there, c colored with crayons and, and there was no plan. There was no religious education plan at the time. So we were all very happy to see these seminarians. They were a gift to us. And I was thinking this year, the only gift I want for Christmas are, is a gift that the Holy Spirit gives. There are gifts of the Holy Spirit. And in my teen years, we were one of the things we were required by the seminarians to do was to memorize them. And we did. I don't remember all of them anymore, but it's probably, it's, I, I do know that, that my favorite one and the one I need the most, the gift I want the most is the gift of patience. And I'm in a hurry to get it. <laughs> anyway, some of the other gifts of the Holy Spirit, there are the gifts of the Holy Spirit and there are fruits of the Holy Spirit. And you can pray for them if you want to, uh, but the Holy Spirit will decide who gets these gifts. If you are aware of, believe in, and venerate the Holy Spirit, it's probable that you already have some of those gifts, that the Spirit has already bestowed some of those gifts upon you. But the gifts of the Holy Spirit are wisdom, understanding, counsel. We'll talk about that in a minute. Fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of God. Um, I'm not sure what's meant by piety. I know what's meant by fear of God. We all need understanding, but patience and fortitude are the ones I want the most. And how do I get them? I guess by thinking about them all the time and cautioning myself and asking the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to help me. I'm going to talk today a little bit to the man who helps us keep these episodes uh, coming to you. That's Eugene Gottwald. And I wonder, Eugene, have you ever met anybody who embodies the gifts of the Holy Spirit? I do know a priest. His name is Father Jerome Sanderson. That's probably the most holy, pious person I've ever met in my entire life. So, yes, I think um, he has most of those gifts. He just seems to just have it right. And I know my wife's grandmother um, was a very patient Person. She was patient up. Yes. Um, she grew up during the Depression on a farm. I um, actually didn't even know there was a Depression because they produced their food and everything, so they didn't want for everything. But there were some challenges within the family that you know, there was a particular member of the family who could easily irritate others. Every but, family has one. And trust me, Melody's grandmother was irritated by this person, but she never showed it. Now, I was an outsider since I married into the family, so she would say things to me she would never say to other people. 
but um, she was just extremely patient with this person and tolerant. And I don't know if there was understanding, it may have been why she had to be like that or something, but she did have that patience. So I have run into people that are just good, decent people um, that do show some of those attributes. How about you? Who have you met? Uh, we had a, a, a priest in our archdiocese who's, who's passed away within the last few years. His parish was in Torrance, California. He was Father Paul Doyle. And he was a, an assistant to Father Gabriel, in a, a convert from the Anglican Church, and an assistant to Father Gabriel in Chicago. And he, when he finally made, made his conversion, decided to go to seminary and became a priest, he served a parish, never took a salary from the parish. He gave it back to the parish. He wasn't rich. He wasn't rich. He had a little bit of money. And he lived very much at the, uh, uh, from the generosity of his, of his parishioners. They would invite him to dinner or bring over a meal or so he, and he didn't have very many requirements. And at one time in the, um, sometime in the early eighties, I got into, I had a problem that I didn't want it to anyone to know about at the time. I didn't, didn't know how to deal with it. And I talked to father Paul, he sent me, he sent me right, right away, he sent me $2,000. And I hadn't asked for it, but I said I would pay it back. And within the year, I was able to do that. And he didn't, he gave it away. He said, we don't, he said, we don't ask when, when our friends need, we don't ask to be repaid. Um, he was humble, he was pious, and he had a very charming sense of humor. It was quiet. And, and that's very important in a, in a person that, that can view almost everything with humor. And so, yes, I did. I'm going to talk about the, I, I'm going to tell you what the fruits, I don't know why there's a difference between the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Wish I had those seminarians here today, the fruits and the gifts, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And I guess if you've been given the gifts, these must be the fruits of those gifts. They're love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, long suffering. Is there a difference between long suffering and patience? Mildness, fidelity, modesty, continence, and chastity. I suppose if you have all the gifts, that those gifts will somehow, those gifts will somehow bear fruit. And they really are the only things I want this Christmas. By the time you reach your golden years, um, you pretty much, if, if you're blessed, I would hope if you're, that you would have all of the material things that you need. Hope they don't get taken away from you or swept away somehow. That's another test. I don't want anything physical. I really, and I guess the best way to have them is to pray for them. Um, do you still make a nice Christmas for your children? You talk about Santa Claus. We did, but it wasn't the main thing. I kind of almost always knew that Santa Claus was, you know, was just something they told me about. But I always felt like Christ was real and that it was really his birthday. Uh, it's going to be different trying to celebrate Christmas for a lot of people this year. They're telling us, our, many of our leaders are telling us, don't get together with people. Don't have too much family around. And in the state of Vermont, in thanks, uh, over the Thanksgiving holiday, they had, they had restricted, uh, the governor had restricted people from commingling or from being with their friends and being in groups. And they asked the children 
They were going to ask the children when they got back to school after the vacation, what did you do for Thanksgiving? Did grandma come over? Did your neighbors come over? Did you have a lot of people? They were encouraging the children to rat on their parents if they had more people, if they went against the, uh, the decrees that those in power were, off, were, were decreeing. I can't imagine living in a society like that. I'm very surprised we were in Vermont for nearly 40 years, and I always felt so free. There was, it was a rural community. I can't imagine that they will do that for Christmas. I would like to ask anybody who's viewing to pray that we don't get into a situation, a, Chris, a real prayer, that we always have the ability to be able to get together with our loved ones, to share the feast days with joy with our loved ones or with, or with strangers who have no, nowhere. Probably the best Christmas I ever had was as an adult when we gathered friends of ours who were not part of a church, were, were not necessarily Christian, just didn't, just didn't think about God that much. But they joined us in making a dinner in our church in our church hall for some newly arrived Canadians. We contacted the councils, consulates in that in the city, and for some newly arrived Canadians who would have their first Christmas to welcome them. That was a wonderful day, um, and I'm not saying that to brag. I'm not saying that to brag. I I I, I heard a story like that from Eugene. And we both concurred that the feeling that you get from that is so amazing that that must be one of the gifts from the Holy Spirit. Do you think that's so, Eugene? I don't know if it's a gift from the Holy Spirit, but... The good feeling? Uh, Joy? We, it's what we're supposed to do. And I... You know, we always hear this expression, well, I did this wrong, well, I'm only human. And it's a totally misunderstanding what human is. Human is what we were in the Garden of Eden. So I think there's just a feeling of satisfaction that you're becoming more human when you do something like human, like God intended human beings to do. So where does that feeling come from? I don't know, but we're supposed to look out for other people and help the needy and all that. That's, you know, what being human is about. So I think there's, and I try never to let it be pride, but I think of it more as satisfaction. Thank you, God, for giving me the financial resources that I can do this. So to me, it just, as I said, I think the best way I can describe it, it makes me feel human. When there's so much terrible going on in the world, at least I can try at least on one day for one, two, three hours to try to be as God intended for us to be. Yeah, I, I agree. It is, it's, a, it's an amazing feeling. There's not a feeling like it. Um, and I hope you can all get that. I hope that everybody watching or, or listening can get that feeling. That's a wonderful Christmas present. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button uh, on, on your on your iPad, your iPhone, or whatever. Put also the subscribe button. Please subscribe and push the notification so you'll know. When, uh, when we do these videos, when they come out, thumbs up, subscribe, notification. Remember those three things. And I'd be very grateful. God bless you.